So how are you doing this morning? This evening for me. Oh, you're in Romania, is that right? In Spain, <laughs> close sure. enough. Okay, so um, I talked to Bill Sage the other day and he posed an interesting question to me and he said, is this a horror movie or is this really a love story? Ooh, <laughs> Bill's always got the best questions. Well, what do you think? I mean, from his point of view or his character's point of view, maybe it is love story, but I would say from Jen's point of view, it's definitely not a love story. Yes, I think it's far from a love story for her, but I get that um, for Bill's character, for, for John Venable, it might be. Because, well, I don't know if we can do spoilers. Um, we have to do spoilers because we got to talk about this ending in a minute because it's okay. insane. Um, well, I just feel like he, yeah, he does fall for Jen and, and sees her as, as his wife. And, and really does believe that, you know, she's truly fallen for him and for the foundation and she'll actually stay. Um, that would be a little bit naive, <laughs> but I, I get that he would see it as a love story. Well, and then the other interesting question he posed, when we see this one kid down in the hole, would you rather die in this scenario or be blind and shoved underground for the rest of eternity? I mean, which one of those two things do you pick? For me, I think I would have just rather died on the altar there. Yeah, yeah. it's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, seeing Luis like that is not pretty. <laughs> now, when um, Mike, uh, the director, takes you guys out into the woods, does he sort of make you live the foundation lifestyle for a little bit? Or did you have it pretty nice out there? I mean, where was the balance between finding this horrible night in the rain in the woods and kind of fitting into that atmosphere? Um, you know what? It was absolutely amazing. It was lovely. We were in Hocking Hills, which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, and for us, for the actors, it was hard in some ways because obviously, you know, it's, it's not as comfortable, but it was great because it really helped us get into character because it feels like a character in itself, the, the location. But for crew, it was something else, like having to lug everything around, the rain, the weather, darkness. It was It was pretty intense. And for us, Obviously, it wasn't easy, but it, it helped that it wasn't easy because it helped us to really get into character. Now, was that actually out in the Appalachian Trail that you guys shot, or was this in a different location? It's in Ohio, so a different location, but okay. similar vibes. Okay, because I was going to ask if you actually saw any cannibal hillbillies. I don't know if we can use that term anymore because people get a little bit upset about it, but did you run into anything like that out there while you guys were camping? I wish. Uh, we had something that looked a little bit dodgy and supernatural, but it was actually just the toilet we were using. But it looked like it had this like black <laughs> cape over it. So you could have some privacy if you wanted to go to the loo in the middle it's of the It's like park. an interdimensional portal, but a yeah. toilet at the same time. That's exactly <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> now, I think what's interesting, um, coming from your viewpoint as this character, Jin, maybe you see this a little bit differently. When I was watching the movie, I thought, man, after we get done with this, opening bar scene I don't think any of these six kids are that likable you're like maybe we kind of want to see something happen to these guys in the woods the director says that's intentional but I want to know your viewpoint coming from Jen's viewpoint do you see this group as sort of unlikable intentionally he said it was an intentional uh, viewpoint but maybe from your viewpoint it's a bit different yeah, I mean, I get that it's intentional for the plot. It makes more sense, and, and that's kind of what has to happen. But I think from Jen's point of view, I, I, everyone's just a little bit misunderstood. And, and if we think about, like, I guess the morals of, of the film and having to question who the villain or the baddie really is, it makes you just see everything from a different perspective and try to relate to each character and understanding that everyone is just kind of a... A product of their upbringing so they don't really know any better maybe just like <laughs> the foundation are the way they are because it's what's been passed on down generations and they believe that that's right so it, it kind of makes you question a little bit who the bad guy is i guess well and one of the interesting things is jen's boyfriend in the movie decides to stay once she plans this big escape which was interesting to me that he's decided that hey maybe this is the better lifestyle the foundation yeah, he, he finds himself, I guess. And Jen finds herself too, but it's just not there with Darius. It's a very different turn now. I want to talk about the ending. I know you said spoilers, but first of all, when you shoot this ending, did you know, I, I've seen a lot of horror movies. I don't think I've ever seen a horror movie end in the fashion that this plays out in terms of 
if you get up and leave, you're going to miss the entire ending of the movie. And a lot of people don't realize this. When you're shooting it, do you know that's how they're going to play it in the movie? Um, well, I don't know if you, you you spoke to Bill only about this or not not to Mike. Yeah, I spoke to Bill and the director about this. Oh, okay. So you spoke to Mike. Yeah, so it, it wasn't in the initial script, that ending. It was a, an alternative ending that I think Mike and Alan maybe came up with during the shoot and, and they told us about it and we were so excited about it. And they ended up giving us some time to shoot it, like right right the end, the, the credit scene. And I think Mike did say that it would be the credit scene, but we didn't know until I watched the film that that was going to be the ending because uh, we had two different options and I'm really happy that it was that one because I feel like you have a twist then another twist and it's like it's going to end but no there's another twist but when I watched it I did think oh my god some people are going to miss this if like they've not enjoyed the film that much or they're like ready to go they're gonna hit pause before the credits well there's a couple of different points I want to go off but first you say people might not enjoy it I don't think that's true I looked at the the user rating and people are digging this movie which is interesting to me because first of all, I don't know if you've seen the wrong turn original six films. This is not that, this is like a complete wrong turn from that. So that fans and horror fans are embracing it so much is a good thing because usually people get mad when you take a title and then change it completely. Yeah. Yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised by that. I, I, I've been trying not to, I, I said to myself, when the film is coming out, do not read any reviews, do not go on Twitter, do not look at anything, because you only remember the bad stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I obviously have, because, I mean, it's COVID and life's a little bit boring. <laughs> so I've had a lot of time to go on my phone and have a look. And I've been pleasantly surprised. Like, obviously, there's some people who are like, where are the cannibals and where's Three Finger? And I get that. But some people have said, look, I really like the original, but I like this too. It's a different take and maybe more suitable for this time for something different. Now, something Mike didn't bring up that I want to ask you about is the fact that you guys shot this ending um, not knowing you were originally going to shoot it. it was it just maybe one? I to say that. <laughs> oh, maybe not. Well, I was wondering, was it just that one take? That's all you had time for? Maybe that's why it happens the way it happens during those end credits because, I mean, we see it far away. If you're watching it like on your phone, you're not even going to know what's going on. You're like, what? what's happening? You know, so that's interesting to me. Maybe that's why it rolls out like it does. But like you said, yeah. maybe you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> and it was, it was a pretty big scene as well, like having an RV crash and like, it's not something just like, oh, let's just do it this afternoon. Like it's, it's a pretty big scene with like stunts and everything. So I'm really happy that they let us do it and, and then it worked. But it's saying it does work. Now we have the little girl, we have you, and we never see John die exactly because you can't really tell who she's killing. Yeah. So I have a feeling there's going to be a wrong too in this version of the franchise. That would be amazing. <laughs> now, what would you like to see happen in the sequel? Because it seems like this set it up for a wild sequel. I mean, there's like all the pieces are in place. There could be so many different options. I mean, Darius has stayed. I mean, it depends on, has Venable died? Has he not? You know he is, hasn't. <laughs> is Darius going to take over? Is it going to be like, you know, Darius against Jen and who were a couple before? It could be anything. Yeah, that's but, the... I mean, there's more people who are a lot more creative who would be a lot better at coming up with <laughs> very good ideas. You bring up a good point. You don't, you don't ever see what happens to Darius. So he's in the woods somewhere. I don't think he was in the RV. He's not in the house. But then you have the dad. Uh, and where is he? He like he brings her home and then we don't see the dad again. And that like is definitely open-ended. So it's like this whole series of things where you're like, what? It's like you need the sequel immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. No, I think a lot of people feel that way. I was like, like you said, I was like, first of all, I didn't read about this movie and I was expecting the cannibals to come out. And then as it slowly turns out, you're like, hey, this is... This is not what I was thinking it was going to be. Now, when you're on set and they're smashing somebody's head like they do, not to give anything away, we know there's going to be kills, but it's interesting how they shot it. What does that look like when you're there watching it? Because I, especially when they, they smash the one kid's head with the hammer, that, I know how they do those effects sometimes, but they did that one so well with the human body twitch. I'm like, how do they do this? And what's it like to watch that happen in front of you? It's just as intense. 
like you, you you can't watch it like I mean I, I don't like watching any kind of fight scenes like I, I do like watching my like a bit of violence in films but watching them makes me feel really uncomfortable and I feel like my whole body I'm like oh and <laughs> on set it was just like that and they make everything look so real and it, it looks like a real person to you from where you're standing and then having someone go down on it with a huge hammer or like log and it splattering everywhere <laughs> it's pretty intense <laughs> you believe it like it, it's not hard to get into character in that moment now did you go back and watch matthew modine's uh movies from the 80s or did you only know him from stranger things uh i knew him from stranger things and full metal jacket but i hadn't seen it for years have you ever seen the vision quest movie that's the no. one that always sticks out in my head as the the great matthew okay. modine movie I'm always looking for movie recommendations, so. Oh man, that's a good, he's like a, a wrestler in high school. Oh, nice, okay. It'd be and nice to see him like that now after working with him. That's the one that always sticks in my head, but I know a lot of people forget about because I guess maybe it's a little bit of a cult movie, a little bit obscure, but it's not like a horror movie or anything. It's like, he's just a wrestler in high school. That sounds maybe good, I can't imagine him doing that role. He's just so lovely on set and like playing my sweet dad. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good one. Now, um, I have not seen Warrior Nun. Are you shooting that now? Or are you coming back for the second season? Or I don't even know if you survived the first season. <laughs> I'm only, I only have a really tiny part in that. I was in like the first four episodes, but I think they are doing a second season. I don't think they've started filming yet, but I'm not uh, a part of that. Okay, yeah, because I saw that come up, but I was, I was looking at it and I'm like, well, it doesn't say, it doesn't say where she is, what happened to her. <laughs> I was afraid to ask because, you know, I, I so much stuff on Netflix. How do you expect me to watch it all? Yeah, no, but, I know. I'm the same. I'm the same. But what what is that show like for people who haven't seen it? Because I know it's fairly new. It just came out last year, right? Yeah, it came out last year and people seem to really love it. I, I can't really I you know, say, say much for it because I have a very small part and I'm not a part of like the awesome, cool warrior nuns. <laughs> but I think it's a really, really cool idea and it worked really well and the cast are amazing. And I think it's probably a really, really great one, especially for young girls watching because it's like all these incredible, powerful, badass women um, and really relatable at the same time. So I, th I think it's really worked. I, I really enjoyed it. It's funny and it's badass and there's a bit of violence. So it's kind of yeah. perfect. Well, it looks definitely like something I would watch. That's the thing I was looking at this morning. I was like, this looks awesome. Why haven't I seen this? Yeah. You should. So They're amazing on all the cast. Last question I have is you are out in Spain. Are you out there filming something? You live out there or are you working? I don't know what the quarantine is like. Here, most things are shut down and they just like, you go to work one day and then they're like, no, go take the go next back. seven days yeah. off. Yeah, it's pretty much like that here too. I live here because I, I grew up here and I was traveling after the movie and I was in Peru and Ecuador and then I came back planning on going to LA and COVID happened, so I got stuck here. And there's not really been much going on, so I've just been here in my hometown and doing other things and I'm going off to do something else now in a couple of months, finally getting out <laughs> and uh, getting back on set. Excellent. But it's, it's been quite quiet here and it's been the same as probably in the US. Everything's pretty much shut. Yep. Just listen to the birds chirp. That's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> so. Take my dog for walks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming and chatting for a little bit and uh, definitely looking forward to seeing the continuing adventures of Jin Me and too. what happens with her. And I guess is it her ex-husband now? I don't know. I know they were officially married, so. That's true. Jin drama gonna play well you know i think in i are you allowed to say hillbilly i don't know anymore because people do get mad this hillbilly eulogy came out and then they're like uh-uh stop saying that word so i was told to say cannibal <laughs> so, so just like the, the the funny looking cannibals yeah backwoods cannibals i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but anyways they're in his family yes Exactly. So I will see you later and thanks for coming on and have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.